The command pattern is a behavioral design pattern in which an operation and everything related to an operation is wrapped inside of a class. Now this class implements a common interface, usually the command interface, and this interface exposes one method, typically execute or something along those lines, and that method executes the operation that the command holds. Now the key benefit here is that clients just need to depend on that command interface, and by doing that, they can ultimately support various commands without having to change. While that's probably the biggest benefit of the command pattern, another benefit is that since everything related to the command's operation is wrapped inside of a class, that allows us to perform other operations such as undoing or redoing the original operation. So now that we know what the command pattern is, let's go ahead and implement it so that we can really see the benefits of it and really how it works. So starting off, let me introduce the demo application I have here. So starting from the top in our program.cs, we have this app that we instantiate and we just call app.run. Now this app really represents my user interface. So maybe I should have called it like user interface or something. And really all our UI is, is just text written to the console. So no like actual GUI, but we say press one of the keys below to perform the corresponding action. So if the user presses A, it'll perform action one, B will perform action two, and C will perform an undo operation. So we figure out what the user typed in, and then we're gonna perform the corresponding operations inside of this switch statement. Now, the key here is that this user interface is intended to support hundreds of applications. So that's like the constraint we're gonna enforce here. So we can't just hard code all of our behavior inside of the switch statement. We want this to be reusable. So instead, what we're gonna do is implement the command pattern. So we're gonna depend on an I command interface, which we're gonna implement in just a second. And every other application that wants to use this user interface can just pass in any commands that we want and it'll work flawlessly. So let's go ahead and first set up our commands. So first we're gonna create that I command interface. I'm gonna put all of this into a commands folder. So we're gonna have an interface. This is gonna be an I command. And on this interface, we're just gonna have a single method it's gonna be a void because we don't need to return anything. We're gonna call it execute, so just a general name here, and not gonna pass in any parameters. So again, no return type, no parameters. All this interface is really doing is connecting our user interface to our application's behavior. So that being said, there really shouldn't be anything to return, and there shouldn't be anything that we pass into this method. All that's gonna happen is that we're gonna execute a command whenever the user presses one of these console keys. So now that we have our interface, Let's go ahead and depend on that I command interface. So we're going to have three fields in here. We're going to get three commands passed in and make sure you import our I command interface because there is one in system.windows.input and that's the one that we use for things like WPF. I actually use it all the time, but I figured we create our own. And again, I'm going to have commands for each of our actions. So this is gonna be action one command and then two more action two command and then finally our undo command. And let's just get these passed through the constructor. And now we'll have these commands initialized. So let's hook those up to our console keys. So console key A is gonna perform action one. So we'll take our action one command and execute that. And then similar for console key B, except this is action two command. And then C is gonna be our undo command. So now our user interface depends on these commands and we can pass in any commands that we want into our user interface. But first we're gonna have to actually implement a command. So let's create a new class. I'll call this the change first name command. And this is gonna implement our new I command interface. So implement that. And the reason I chose change first name as the name of our command is because I actually have this model over here for a person. So this is what we're gonna be using to implement some logic in our application. Just a simple class with a first name, a last name, and an override on two string that prints out their first name and last name. So nothing crazy there, but we are gonna have a command to change that person's first name. So let's get that person passed in here. So I'm gonna put that in a field and get that through the constructor. And then all we're gonna do in execute is take that person and we're gonna change their first name. And we're just gonna generate a random first name. So I'm gonna use bogus for this which is a useful package to generate fake data. And I think I already have this installed. So packages, we have bogus. So make sure you grab that off Nougat if you're using it here. But we're gonna instantiate a new bogus faker and we're just gonna dig into person 
and grab a random first name. So let's pass this command to our app and that's gonna be done in our program.cs. So we have to pass in three commands. We're gonna have the change first name command as action one. So let's instantiate that here. And then we're gonna have to instantiate a person. Let's do that up here as well. New person. And their initial first name will be Singleton and last name will be Sean. So let's pass that person to our command. And now we need an action two command. So I'm just gonna copy this first one and rename this to be the change you guessed it, change last name command. Let's make sure we fix that inside of here. Change last name command. And now we're just gonna set the person's last name to a random last name from Bogus. And then let's pass that to action two. So the change last name command. And actually we'll implement the undo stuff next. But first I wanna test this out. So let's just pass in null for the undo command. And then lastly, if we want our application to be useful, so we can actually see what's going on. Let's console write line our person after we change anything on their name. And let's do that for both of our commands. So let's go ahead and run this and we should get what we expect. So let's press A and we changed our first name. So then we have Carlton Sean. Let's change our last name. Now we have Carlton. Ooh, I didn't think I'd be getting hard names. Carlton Morissette. I think that's right. But yeah, it looks like it's working as expected. And the key here is that our user interface is just dependent on these commands. So if we ever want this UI to do something else, all we have to do is pass in different commands to our app. And just to relate this to other technologies, this is how WPF commands work as well. So if we recall, buttons in WPF, they have a command property on them. And that command property takes in an I command. And my application, your application, everybody's application can just pass in any command that they want as long as it satisfies the I command interface. So that's essentially the same thing we're doing here, except my user interface probably isn't gonna be reused by anyone, at least not on the scale that a WPF button would be. But anyways, we've covered this idea of depending on an I command interface so that the client or the user interface can support various commands without having to change. But now let's get into this undo concept. So since our command is wrapped inside of a class, we could store some data inside of this class to support undoing the operation. So in order to undo changing the person's first name, we're first gonna have to figure out what their previous first name was. So we're gonna store that inside of a field. So let's get a string up here. We'll call this previous first name. And then we'll just set this before we change their first name. And we're gonna set it to the person's current first name. And now if we wanna undo this command, so let's add an undo method. All we have to do is set the person's first name to the previous first name. And actually maybe we should only do this if the previous first name is not null. So let's have that little check in there because if we never execute this command, then the previous first name is going to be null. But anyways, let's go ahead and move this over to the change last name command. So just gonna pretty much copy paste this, except this is now gonna be previous last name and we're gonna be changing the person's last name again. And then let's add this field. It's gonna be a string. And then we're gonna set previous last name. So now we support undo on these commands. But first, we're gonna have to actually have an undo command that we can pass into our user interface because right now undo command we pass as null. So let's add that command. This is gonna be a new item here, the undo command. It's gonna implement our I command interface. And all we're gonna do in here is undo the command. But what commands are we undoing? We don't have a place where we actually track the commands that have been executed. So we're gonna need another class here and this is gonna be our command history. So this class is gonna track the commands that we've executed so that we know what needs to be undone. And typically to implement history behavior, we would wanna use a stack. So let's get a stack field in here. So just a stack that's gonna hold our commands that have been executed and we'll just call it commands. And let's initialize that in the constructor. And in our case, we really only need two methods here. So the first one is gonna be push and this is adding a command to our history. So let's take our command stack and push a command. And then the other method is gonna be pop and pop is gonna give back the command that was previously executed. So it's gonna pop a command off the stack. But if there's no commands in our history, so that means our command stack has a count of zero, then we're gonna actually return 
null. But if we do have a command in our history, then we're just going to pop it from our stack and return it. So let's go ahead and use this command history class inside of our undo command. So we should be done with that. Let's get the command history passed into our undo command. So command history, get that through the constructor. And when we execute the undo command, first we're going to grab the last executed command from our command history. So using command history pop, and then we're going to take that command and undo it. But we actually don't have an undo method on our I command interface. But at the same time, I don't want to add the undo method to our I command interface because I feel like that's enforcing too much on that interface and maybe not every command can be undone. So let's create a new interface and we'll call this the I undoable command or maybe just I undo command. I feel like undoable is a little bit excessive. And I feel like it's fair for this interface to inherit from I command. And now on this interface, we're just gonna have a single method to undo the command. And now we can use this interface on our existing commands because they can be undone. So this is an I undo command. And same for the change first name command, we implement that interface. And now we're gonna have to change our command history class to take an I undo commands instead. So there we go. And now this is a little bit weird because this class is command history. So really it shouldn't have a constraint on only taking in undoable commands, but for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna roll with this implementation. Maybe I'm just being too picky. But anyways, back in our undo command, the popping on command history gives us back an I undo command and now we can actually undo it but we do have to check to make sure that the command does not equal null and we can really just do that in command.undo by using optional chaining so if the command is null then we're not going to try and execute undo all right the undo command is looking good so we should be done there now in our program.cs let's pass in the undo command here and we're going to pass in some command history so let's generate that variable and instantiate that up here and that should be good the only issue is that we never actually push any commands to our command history and this is going to be a little bit weird but i think i actually want to do this inside of these individual commands realistically it might make sense to have like another layer of commands that you would pass into command history but i feel like we can make this work and we might even be able to show off some other patterns along the way. So we're going to pass in command history to each of these commands. Let's update these constructors, add a parameter to each of these, and let's throw command history into a field on each of these commands. So I'll do this for the change last name command as we go. And there we go. Now we got command history in each of these commands. So after we're done executing the commands, what I'm going to do is take our command history and push this command so i could just pass in this instance that's perfectly fine the only issue is that the next time we execute this command we're going to overwrite the previous first name and that means whenever we undo we're not going to be undoing what we did before and actually maybe i should just show off how this looks so let me do command history push in the change last name command as well and then another thing i want to do is write out the person whenever we undo this command as well. So let's do that for both of these commands. And let's try this out, and it should not work as expected. So I'm gonna change our first name, so do that. And now we're Lila Sean, is it Lila Sean? I'm gonna go with Lila Sean, I'm not sure. These names are so tough. But let's change our first name again, and now we're Teresa Sean. And now let me undo. So undo successful, we're Lila Sean now, that's as expected, but now undo again, and we're still Lila Sean. And the reason for that is because whenever we changed from Lila Sean to Teresa Sean, we overwrote the previous first name from Singleton to Lila. And that's because everything is happening inside of the single change first name command instance. So what we should be doing is cloning this change first name command and then pushing it to command history so that we don't overwrite the previous first name. So cloning, hmm, what pattern do we use for that? I'll give you three seconds to guess, okay? Three, two, one, prototype. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna use the prototype pattern to clone our commands. So we're gonna have another method on here. And actually, it doesn't really have to be public. It can just be private because we're doing all this 
inside of our command. So I don't even know if this qualifies as the prototype, but we're gonna return a new change first name command instance, and I'll just call this clone. And inside here, we're just gonna return the new command. We're gonna pass our person in here, pass our command history in here. And actually we have to set previous first name to what it is currently. So let's put this into a variable first, and then we'll end up returning it. But in between here, we have to set the previous first name to whatever the previous first name is at the moment. And now, since previous first name is on this new instance, and this is going to get passed to our command history, that means we can change previous first name on the next execution, and it's not going to mess with our command history. So let's push this clone into here. So instead of passing this, we're going to pass the clones command. So call clone, get our commands back, and pass it to command history. And we're going to do the same thing for the change last name command. Pass in a clone. Let's get our clones in here. And this is the change last name command now. So let's make sure we change that everywhere so that it makes sense. And we're setting the previous last name to the current previous last name. Alrighty, now we're going to run this and we should be able to undo as we expected. All right, so change first name. There we go. We got Angie Sean. Change first name again. Dave Sean. Let's do it one more time. Ernest Sean. And now let's undo all of this. So we should go back to Dave and then to Angie and then to Singleton. Perfect. That works as expected. And now let's mix in some last name changes. So let's change first name first. We got Inez Sean. And then change the last name. We got Inez Hand. Change first name. We got Juana Hand. And then change the last name. Wana Turcot. All right, let's undo all of this until we get back to Singleton Sean. Here we go. Cool, that was awesome. I didn't think of that. We can just spam these buttons as much as we want. And then hold down C, and we eventually get back to Singleton Sean, which is somewhere up here. There we go. So it looks like our application is working as expected, but most importantly, we have implemented the command pattern. So let's review this. Our user interface depends on these I commands, which means any other application could reuse this user interface. All they'd have to do is pass in the commands that they desire for their own application. And our user interface would support it as long as they implement the I command interface. And then the other fun thing that we showed off was the ability to undo commands. So since our operations are wrapped inside of these command classes, we can store additional things such as the previous state so that we can support those undo operations. And not gonna lie, I thought that was a pretty cool demo doing the whole undo thing. So we got to see the prototype pattern kind of, and then we did some cool data structures. So we got a stack to show off our command history. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe it wasn't that cool, but hey, it did work. And we got to see the power of the command pattern. Anyways, hopefully you find the command pattern helpful for your own applications. And if you're building UI applications, such as with WPF, you probably already used it and see that it is helpful. But aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.